Uh, recruiting, uh, Damian Shanklin, huge get as a top 50 player, top five edge rusher. They bring him into the fold just in the last few days, along with Brandon Brown, a defensive lineman out of Florida. Uh, and everyone eyeing the decision next week of cornerback DJ Pickett, who's also looking at Oregon and Miami. Yeah, we'll see what happens uh, with that. Um, you know, it's it's tough because Oregon's got the momentum. Uh, in in all of recruiting. But overall, I look at it from a macro standpoint, Mark. This class will be uh, a top five recruiting class in the SEC. So, um, or, or naturally, it, it'll be a miracle if they're not with how well they have done up to this point. So uh, if DJ Pickett commits, obviously that would be, you know, very huge. But they did a really good job recruiting the trenches and a very underrated three-ish fringe four-star player that they brought in was Brandon Brown. Um, and I think Zion Williams, another defense tackle that they got committed. Uh, very good stuff, you know, replenishing the trenches. And, you know, obviously DB will be the biggest position of need moving forward in recruiting. I think LSU will close pretty strongly there. Because of the concentration of the talent in state and then the brand that carries nationally, does every coach that walks into LSU, if they know what they're doing, just stay with that boilerplate approach? Or is Brian Kelly taking a different approach in any ways to what's been done in the past? Yeah, so I, I do feel Brian Kelly has put together a good staff. I, I have always believed the label of being a good recruiter is overrated. And, you know, the first thing uh, that, that comes out of somebody's mouth about a coach is, well, this guy's a good recruiter. It adds a massive red flag to me. Um, I, I it, there's a lot of data that shows us that the schools, the brand, um, historically, you know, does the recruiting, but I do feel there are some outliers and, you know, Bo Davis has proven this, you know, some Texas guys have now, you know, flipped and gone uh, to LSU. So I, I still believe there is some, uh, you know, credence to that. The one thing I do give Brian Kelly a lot of credit about when it comes to recruiting is the offensive line recruiting. It has never been this good at LSU. Never. Um, of course, occasionally they would get, you know, a good in-state offensive lineman, Lyle Collins being one of them. But for the most part, this run of offensive line recruiting that LSU has been on has been unbelievable. I mean, they have four interior offensive linemen committed, and three of them are top 100 recruits. Um, one was flipped from another SEC school to another. Um, Brian Kelly's offensive line recruiting has been Unfreaking believable. And that that's what's really interesting about LSU. They have not had a first round offensive lineman uh selected since 1998, which is still the wildest stat. Uh, and that player played his pro career and is already in the Hall of Fame. That's how long it's been. So it's it's very interesting uh that Brian Kelly's been able to, you know, change that narrative. You'll have one, maybe two offensive linemen selected in next year's NFL draft in the first round, and there should be many more after that. Carter, what's been going on on your channels that people can tap into? Yeah, Power Hour LSU, it's just, you know, same old, same old live streams. Everything, if you're a diehard LSU football fan, that's for you. Power Hour SEC and Power Hour NFL is more of just a macro deep dive kind of channel. Ironically, Mark, um, Arkansas fans dominate the SEC channel, Arkansas and Tennessee fans. And then the NFL channel is just kind of blown up. You know, it's just kind of national stuff. The NFL is you know, the king for a reason. Uh, but, you know, I, I do a lot of breakdowns on SEC players and and talk about one of the biggest rule changes uh, in NFL history, which are these pineapple guardian caps, uh, which will be allowed to be worn in games. And, you know, it's interesting. You, your helmet shelf back there, um, you might need little miniature guardian caps on each and every one of those. So how do you feel about that, Mark? Uh, feel about that as it pertains to my set. I don't think that's a good look. I, yeah, I think that's but, a bad but look. You can't, not can't not do only, that, but uh, it's yeah, all about safety. Set, but would you still like for me? I, I'm all for player safety, I get it, but the branding of the sport changes so much if you know the players on the field had the caps on because the helmets are, are, are so cool. So, I think it does affect things. Oh, yeah, it's going to affect people's perception. They're going to like subconsciously think, am I watching like an exhibition game or a right. 
spring practice or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very uh, odd. I, I did. I was not aware of that. Oh, OK. So if you want, it's the last video I posted, it's kind of blown up a little bit. Um, so this year in the NFL, they approved and I, I really don't know all the details. That's why I did the video. But they approved saying that you can wear those caps on the field. Uh, for those that don't know, it's like a Lego pineapple soft shell on top of your helmet. So if you don't know what that is, go to Power NFL and 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 uh, I, I go through all the nuances and I play a lot of player interviews about how they feel uh, about the cap. And I get my side of it, but I show both sides. And it's interesting, like how much helmet technology is, has changed. Um, you know, with with uh, a lot of different types of helmets uh, that are out there right now. And Mark, it is insane how expensive every helmet actually is. Every like a good college football helmet's probably three hundred dollars minimum a piece. Uh, so it, it, it's absurd. So go check it out. That's cool stuff. Yeah, it's going to look like spring practice because that's when people ask that question. What What is going on with these guys? What's Well, that's that's what it is. So we'll now see it in the NFL. Yeah. And I would think that the the teams will put the they'll, – they'll need to put the brand on on the right. shell. That's what they'll have to go with. Yeah, but it won't – it'll look a lot – Yeah, it it's not going to have right. the same impact. And a lot of right. guys are going to be – and I understand it, have a little too much ego and want to look good and uh, probably not even want to consider it. And again, I get that. It's kind of similar to the baseball batting helmets at one point that had no ear flap and then they mandated the ear flap, but they let the uh, the old timers stay with, uh, you know, that that were already grandfathered in. Right. It's, it's, it's a weird thing. But Mark, as always, thanks for having me and uh, we'll talk soon, my brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate you being here.